this is Sarah from Average Betty, and I am here with John Shank, executive chef of Strip House at Planet Hollywood, Las Vegas. We all know about how to test the doneness of a steak on your hand. Are there any other body parts that you can use to tell the doneness of meat? I'm sure there are, but my lawyer insists that there's not. <laughs> what are you preparing for us? Well, right now I have our signature 60 ounce New York strip steak. We just have a little bit of blended oil, which is like 80-20 canola oil and olive oil. A little salt on top. We really would like to use a diamond crystal salt. And now it looks like I'm really putting a lot on, but not really. Now we put a lot of pepper on. It helps with the crusting, but a lot of that's going to fall off the cooking process. And then what we have here is a very hot broiler. Probably about 1500 degrees. We cook it where it's at its absolute hottest. That oil really helps the meat surface get really hot very quickly. And it really gets that nice crust going. And so you get a, like a really juicy steak. Is this cooking it on both sides at the same time? or uh, Mostly on the top surface. There is some underheating going on, but it's really about that top surface. Oh my goodness. Is your sock drawer at home that organized? <laughs> No, it is not. <laughs> and now this is just a 22 ounce bone of ribeye from a bigger cut. This stuff will really crisp up the best meat for home to cook. It's just a ribeye because you have that natural marbling. And so that means you're gonna have a great flavorful steak and a very juicy steak. You have this eye, which is almost like a sirloin. And then you have this thing here called the deckle, which is this highly marbled muscle cap. And that cooks to like such a great nutty beef flavor. See. That's been in there for what, maybe three minutes. You really started to see that char develop very nicely. Now, for the home cook, I would say if you're cooking outdoor at a grill, you know, you really want to get your, your fire hot. A little flame's okay, but a lot of flame, obviously not so good. So what you want to do is then move it to the other part of the grill that's hot, but it's not flaming. So now we're going to flip that over. You see I've lost a little bit of that pepper and salt on it, but enough it still remains. Now we're just going to put it back in there. The other real key beyond the high heat is to really let the meat rest at least four minutes minimum. We just do a little light glaze in the oil. We're just going to put it back underneath. We have a little bit of roasted garlic in a profiterole. See that nice little sizzle happening on the steak. You want to just bring the temperature up a little bit in the center of the meat and then really get the outside a nice sizzle. You do eat with all your senses, so we're trying to excite as much of them going in. A little secret is also a little bit of a French sea salt. This is really give a saltiness to it. It just happens to be a little perkiness to it. And with just a little dab of clarified butter. It really just gives it that little polish to it, you know? And that is a strip out strip steak right there. See that nice moisture in there? What uh, degree of doneness is that? That's going to be a, a medium rare plus. Do you feel physical pain when someone orders a steak well done? Uh, absolutely not. Now this is a leftover baker and all we're going to do is we're going to rip it up into different pieces. That's why it's called ripped potato. You have to have either a home fryer or a deep pot that you fry in. It's almost like a free form steak fry. So you can see that that one baked potato it looks like twice the size now. And right? I can rip. I can do that. There we go. That's the thing. It takes no special tool. So, now we have these. Now I'm going to use a little bit of uh, clarified butter. Some parsley. Salt, just a little bit. And then Parmesan cheese over the top. It's hard to believe that one time that was a baked potato. <laughs> you know, I never thought I'd be saying this, but you're quite a ripper. I can, well, I can say, I rip with the best, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Shank, thank you so much for taking the time out today. And is that a giant piece of chocolate cake in your hand, or are you just happy to see me? Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, like my lawyer says it's a piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> i got to talk to this lawyer of yours. <laughs> <laughs> you can. It's going to cost you. <laughs>